Uh, in any case, now this session is about cybersecurity challenges that are going to be presented by the industrial internet of things. And I, Eric Byers and I were talking before this session. You know, we, it, it, it's a very broad word these days, industrial internet of things, as I think you all know. I talk to people, if you talk to 50, you probably get 100 different definitions of what that means. You know, at ARC, we talk about that. It's almost more of a, a business process or an opportunity, I think, and it, it involves having devices to collect data, whether you add new devices, collect data from other devices, but take it to the cloud or take it or use local analytics. But the goal is to try to leverage information that you collect in order to improve your business and do something that will benefit you. And it may have to go to the cloud, but there's also lots of devices that may be directly connected to the internet these days. You know, those are kind of issues. There's a tons of use cases here. So I, we have a very broad point of it. Uh, I don't know what, how they'll frame it. I leave it to each of the people here to frame what they mean by that, if, that's, if they choose to do that, or they may just choose to leave it be what it, whatever you want it to be. But in any case, uh, there are some issues here that, and I, I didn't personally make these up, I'm being Eric Cosman at the moment, uh, but these are ideas or things that were discussed, and it really had to do with what are the implications from a cybersecurity perspective of the industrial internet of things and industry 4.0, and will the trend towards large-scale interconnection of smart devices make it more difficult to secure industrial systems? I think we're all concerned about that. Uh, does the use of smart edge devices change the approach or not uh, to network segmentation and the definition of zones and conduits, which is a very important thing that's a part of the IEC 62443 and other standards? Uh, and will existing standards have to be rewritten? And whenever Eric, who, Eric Cosman, who organized this, is very focused on standards. And so Eric probably framed it from a standards perspective. I, I like standards as well, but I'm not into the standards activity too much. So we'll, they'll, you feel free to address the, anybody here with those issues. Uh, now, with this panel, uh, Eric Byers has graciously agreed to moderate this for us. I think you, I hope you all know Eric Byers. He's a well-known person in the industry. I'll say that, quite well-known. Uh, and I'll let these people, everybody, introduce themselves. And if you look on the app, you know, we've not been going through bios because they're on the apps. So you'll see a nice picture of Eric and a nice bio for Eric on the app, I believe. Uh, and then Eric's going to come and take over. He's going to moderate this. He's going to make it a very, very exciting panel. Am I setting you up nice? It's oh going to be tremendous. You can't imagine how good it's going to be. <laughs> it's greatest. <laughs> it's going to be great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not setting you up for failure here, Eric. Yeah. Uh, and then on the panel joining Eric, we have Jonathan Butts, uh, Francis, how do you say it? Chanfroca. Chanfroca. I got to practice that because we have a thing tomorrow morning. You had it a minute ago. <laughs> That's Chanfroca. And Sven Schrecker. And then we have this fellow who is hyper, hyper, hyper security sensitive <laughs> that would not give us his picture. And that's Steve Venema, who's at the end of the, uh, the table here. So with that said, I pass the baton here to Eric Byers. And I will go out and handle microphones for you. Cool. Thank you very much. That's great. Um, it's, it's absolutely great to be here because uh, I come from the part of Canada that doesn't have snow, except this week where we've got 37 inches and we don't know what to do with a quarter inch. So it's wonderful to be here. Um, and so uh, Sid set it up very well. You know, what is, what is this uh, uh, internet of, industrial internet of things? Well, when I first heard it, I thought, I, I knew what it was. It was complete rubbish. It was just absolute BS. I, I was quite adamant that there was nothing to it. And it wasn't that I thought it was impossible. No, I thought we'd already done it. I mean, after all, if uh, PLCs and RTUs and limit switches and control valves aren't things and aren't smart, then what are they? And we've been networking those things, particularly RTUs and PLCs, for, what, almost a half century for some of them and at least a quarter century for most of them. So, like, what's the big deal? Um, over the last year, I, I actually had the chance to work on a few IOT projects with really smart people some people much smarter than me and, and get involved and sort of see what was going on and I started to get really interested. And I learned a few things about IIoT 
Uh, first of all, it wasn't about making industrial things smart. For the most part, they already are pretty smart. Um, and it wasn't about cabling or wireless or we already have lots of cable. And it certainly wasn't about a new field bus or device bus standard. Uh, heck, raise your hands if you think we need a new, a new field bus standard or a device bus standard. Hey, <laughs> great. <laughs> uh, no, we've got enough of those. Um, so what was it? Well, and why did I think it was rubbish? Well, I have to go back to me as a young engineer, and probably most of us as a young engineer. You know, as a young engineer, if the data that I uh, wanted wasn't in the Pi data historian, it didn't exist. That wasn't data. Um, I kidded myself. I, I believed that the only data that mattered was process data. That was my belief. Um, but things are changing, and as I looked at these projects and got involved in these projects, I started to see that IIoT, the Industrial Internet of Things, wasn't about process data per se, per se. It was about all that data that was previously hidden away on the plant floors, inaccessible, or data that was hidden away on the customer premises, or somewhere in between. And it was also about sharing that far beyond the point where that data was getting generated. So, to me, that was what IIoT is. But let me give you a very specific example, one that really was one of the ones that kind of caught my attention. Um, Bill Brown uh, used to be the director of digital innovation at uh, Stanley Black & Decker, and somebody I know. And they had a, a IIoT deployment about a year ago that's quite interesting. And now we all know Stanley as a tool company. They make tape measures, right? They even make smart tape measures, but that's not what I'm going to talk about. Um, they also make those glass doors that open and close in front of Walmart and Home Depot, and you walk through them when you go to get one of those Stanley tape measures, those automated doors. And that was what they were focusing part of their IIoT deployment <clears throat> on, was uh, understanding those doors. What Brown told me was, that prior to their IoT de deployment, predictive maintenance and maintenance of all kinds on those doors was a real challenge. They simply didn't know when to roll a truck out to fix the doors. Uh, until, a customer, until a door broke and they had an upset customer, nobody went out to fix them. Or if they did go to, fix, to work on a door on a preventative call, it was often unnecessary and a waste of money. So Stanley Black & Decker launched this IIoT project and with the idea of collecting information from doors. And they started to instrument things like motor temperature, uh, current draw, alignment, all the information they could off those doors. So this isn't a big, heavy industrial project. It's a very, very simple, but widespread, widely distributed IIoT project. Um, and it changed the way they did business, and it's changed the way they, their customers see their doors, because now they don't have to wait until the customer complains. They'll roll out the trucks when they see a motor is running too hot, or whether the, whether the left side door is running at a different temperature than the right side door, or drawing more current, or, and this has really changed their business model for those doors. But it's not only done that, it's, it's changed the way that Stanley has Customers see the doors. The customers think the doors are more reliable because they don't break as often. Why? Because the service trucks are rolling out to fix them before they do break. So here we've got something that is being shared, data that's being shared far beyond the point where it gets produced. It's getting shared, of course, to the customer and the store customer, to the service teams, right back down to Stanley's manufacturing team to learn better about how to build their doors. Uh, it's all about the data and yet the customer thinks the door works better and nothing has changed mechanically. So when I s learned about this particular project, it really caught my attention. And it really brings me to the point of my uh, introduction here is that IoT is not about the things. It's about distributing data from industrial things at a whole new scale. It's about uh, taking information and not keeping it at the Purdue level where it got generated. Just because IO gener data gets generated at layer one, maybe it gets up to <coughs> layer two or three. No, this is to, to distribute it not just inside the layer or inside the company, but even far beyond that. But, well, what is IoT really doing? IIO2, it's, it's tearing down barriers. But, and here's the but, 
we all know that information is money, information is power. If we need to manage that distribution of data, it can't just go to anybody or everybody. Um, and to do that needs good security. So this really brings the question back to where uh, Eric Cosman had made those questions. And that is, are the ICS security models, the technologies, the processes, the standards that we've worked on diligently for the many of us for the last 15 years, trying to get a handle around ICS security, are they up to the task? Or do we take all those technologies and concepts and standards and chuck them in the bin and start again? Or can we even solve this problem? So that's the question we have for our panelists today and they're going to talk about is how can we have the industrial internet of things and at the same time good cybersecurity? And so with that, I'm going to hand it over to our first panelist, uh, Dr. Jonathan Butts. Thanks, John.